Huh. Convenient, nice, modern human bone construction materials. Nice access to the local hell portal and to the sacrificial circle. And it even has fully working blood jacuzzis. I think I've discovered a new summer home. Hello everyone, welcome to Regrowth. As part of the celebration of the completion of our first mega project, I decided to venture out and check out the final place that these monster maps can send us to, the Bloodied Temple. So let's check this place out. Has a couple of those skeleton spawners we saw in the last one. Bones all over the place. I think that is Tinker's Construct blood up there. Can I get a look at the... Uh, I guess not. Oh, hello. What? Poison. I guess blood poisons you when you touch it. Yeah, skeleton spawner. Okay, anything beneath here? Guess not. Yeah, little bit of a climb up here. All these skull candles, bones. Kind of reminds me of, uh, what are they called? Towers of Silence. They're, they're, I think they might be from India or something. They're a funeral method where you basically have a big open tower where you leave your corpses and the birds eat them away to nothing. Kind of romantic if you think about it. So, ah, here we are. Just like, I, I guess, I might as well take the Arcane Pedestal. We're making an Infusion Altar today. We're going to use it. So, we get a greater reward bag. And we from that, we get just some Magical Fertilizer. Lame. But, yeah. I also went back and I explored all around that first, uh, that first map area that turned out to be a dud the first time. And I even tried regenerating it, and as far as I can tell, that area just like, I don't know, I guess that whatever it was got eaten by a cave system or something. So, we don't have that ruin. But, I can keep on respawning the Abyssal Mausoleum in this bloodied temple, and I can keep on trying them, and I can see what I can get out of those reward bags. So, that was fun. I'll see you back at the base. Okay. I am back at the base. I am in my comfy, comfy magic pajamas. I have got my wands, both of them fully charged. Let's make some magic happen. The infusion altar is a bit of a finicky multi-block. We are going to have to make some parts for it. And we are going to have to arrange them and then infuse them with magic. So the first thing we need is these arcane stone bricks. That's very, very easy. We just need some arcane stone. And I already have some arcane stone. Just need to take them, arrange them. Doesn't even take magic. So, around this altar pedestal that we got from the temple, we place the four of them like zot. Then we take the four regulars, and we put those right on top. And before I activate this thing, let me just... Yes. Oh, I never scanned Arcane Stone. Hmm. So, the last thing we need is the Runic Matrix. That, I believe, is going to cost that. Four shards and it's going to cost more arcane stone arcane stone is very very easy it is just any color shard and some smooth stone which i need to get some more of as i've told you before the infusion altar is kind of what we're going to be doing all of our advanced magic working on and i think the main first use i'm going to be looking for it for is I am going to want to create some better wands because this gold banded wand, yeah, it's okay, but it only stores 50 frickin' V. I mean, come on. And there are more convenient means of recharging out there. I don't just have to rely on. Speaking of, yeah. 
notice that, like, this is going to chew up almost all of the Ordo in here. In fact, I think... Uh, yeah, if I, if I search back in my book here, it says that it takes 25 of each essence in order to activate the... Uh, yeah, so I need to refill this thing. Anyway, the only special thing to note about the multi-block is the Runic Matrix floats one on top. Like that. And then you just remove the block. So yes, that is the multi-block. Now I need some more V in order to activate it. I'll just put this iron-capped wand back. So I don't think I'm going to wait to farm more mobs. I'm going to show you something. There is a hotkey. I'm not sure if it's listed in here. The, the Crafting Tweaks gameplay. Inventory, inventory, blah, 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 blah. Mechanism, miscellany. Ah, there it is. TC Node Tracker. That is a mod that's just installed in Regrowth. I have it bound to I, which I believe is the default. And it shows you all the nodes you've scanned. And you can sort through them. But I'm just going to ask it for nodes that I found that have Ordo on them by clicking this Ordo icon up here. And I have 132. Okay. So, does this thing give me a waypoint? Oh, I see. I see. Okay. That's neat. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Damn it. Damn it. He... I, I, I have that armor in perfect condition. Frickin' jockey. Well, that's another thing that we'll be looking at the altar for. It can give you some pretty unique enchants, including armor repair. Okay. So, yeah. You see that we can track down... Oh, yes, and one research I have is is node safety. I can I have it set so that I always leave one aspect in there automatically. If I held down sneak, I would drain it completely, and that can damage the node. So you don't want to do that. Okay, now how do I turn this off? Uh, clear arrow. Yes, that does it. Oh yes, and just for the halibut, I decided to terraform this area, and it turned the Spanish moss a very pretty green color. Let me just... Yes, it's kind of almost teal. I like it. Come on, game. Okay. Well, now that we have the wand mostly refilled, halfway, kind of, sort of, we can kick this thing on just by right-clicking it. Ooh. Yeah, in a world of pure blocks, things that curve like that must look incredibly over otherworldly. So yeah, it's all spinny, and it's glowy, and it's neat. Now, that alone is not enough for us to do any work with. In order to interact with the arcane, with the infusion table, I need to make some more of those pedestals. Thankfully, they are very cheap. They are just arcane stone and some air V. I think eight is a good enough amount to start with. Now... The infusion altar is a little bit odd. It, I think it actually has the exact same range as the witchery altar, 14 blocks. I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up and tell you in post. But it has a pretty large area where it scans for things that it can interact with. And those things that it interacts with have to be arranged symmetrically. Meaning that if I put... They have to be arranged symmetrically along one of the axes, the y-axis, I think. Meaning that if I put these two pedestals here, then they are one, two, three away, and they are one apart. So on the other end, I have to go one, two, three away, and one apart. Otherwise, the altar will gain something called instability. And instability is very, very bad. 
And let's just mirror that one, two, three, and two apart. One, two, three, and two apart. Oops, I said two apart. Yes. So the way the infusion altar works is I put an item in the center to be infused. Then I put items that act as sort of catalysts on these pedestals all around it. And yes, the items also have to be arranged symmetrically. So if, if I were to put, say, an item here, then in order for me not to have any more instability, I would have to put another item here. It's symmetrical diagonally, you see? Yes, and you can just right click to get them off the pedestals. Pedestals are also very good for like creating a showroom of things because they kind of just float in place and it's very, very pretty. Anyway, so I have to put the item in the center. I have to arrange as symmetrically as possible and it is not always possible to get perfect symmetry because some things use an odd number of items. But I have to arrange as symmetrically as possible all the items that act as catalysts and then I need to melt items down in this alchemical furnace, remember this, to get the liquid essentia that it will be infused inside of it. So just as an example recipe, let's say I wanted to make uh, Axe of the Stream. Axe of the Stream is actually kind of useful. So I would need a diamond, two water shards, and a great wood log. Yes, and a diamond. Now, in the book, you see that it's kind of arranged them in this four star pattern. That is not strictly necessary. We can arrange them just like so. All that matters is that the items are present and that they are as symmetrical as possible. So with these two pedestals filled and these two pedestals filled, we have perfect symmetry and all the items are present except for our Thaumium Axe, which I believe should be really simple to make. I think it just goes like a regular vanilla style axe. Yes. Wait, that looks a bit different than the one in the book. Eh, no, it doesn't. I guess it's just the dark background fooling me. And let's scanny scan. Did I remember to scan the runic matrix? I didn't. And I could have sworn that scanning the matrix itself revealed some research to you. Hmm. Anyway, the Thaumium Axe is the item that is accepting all this power, so it goes in the very centaur. Now, I would then have to fill up some jars in the altar's reaction area, and thankfully I don't think jars have to be arranged symmetrically. They just need to be present. But I would have to fill up some jars with Arbor, which is easy, and Aqua, which is moderately easy. Let's, let's actually do that. Let us make an axe of the stream. So I'm going to move this Motus jar, and I'm just going to keep it. And let's set up the jars over here because that'll be within range of golems for when we get them. That's something I should have done. I should have started with the decanting golems. Anyway, so um, to get our arbor, let's just do great wood logs because they also contain precantatio, which is useful in a ton of things. Let's melt those down. And while that is happening, I will go and get the sugarcane that is going to be necessary for the aqua. Um, sugarcane is a famously good source of aqua. And I need to make some more warded jars. Clunk. Thankfully, warded jars are relatively easy. It's just seven of those and some wood slabs. A 
arranged like so. So, let us now melt down our sugar cane, which I put in here. How many do I need? I need 16. Yes. Uh, the the alchemical furnace actually burns in an interesting way. It doesn't have the standard one coal per, I per eight items split. It does actually quite a lot more. You see it's barely burnt down this one piece of coal. However, the limiting factor is how fast it can deal with this purple sludge. Once that vial fills up, it will backlog and it will still be burning fuel. So to deal with that, you can stack up Alembics high, 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 high up, and it will pull them out a little bit faster. Or you can fill the alchemical furnace with a special fuel called Alumentum, which has to be made using a crucible recipe. But I don't particularly like you doing that because it's, you know, it's extra processing. And usually I fill these things up with something special that I will be making when I get into blood magic which we can actually technically do right now, but uh, this is a Thomcraft episode. I decided it is done. So, we just need to let... Ah, here is a problem. You see, the Alembic is full of air, but the only accepting sources are Herba and Aqua. So I need to put the third jar down and give it a tube. Jar, 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 jar. Oh, I had tons of jars. Derp. Oh, well, you can never have enough jars. There are a billion types of Essentia. And yes, um, the the stuff that goes in a wand is called V, the stuff that goes in a jar is called Essentia, and the stuff that goes in a research table is called Research Aspect. And I will get them confused all the time. This Herba Essentia is actually something that's relatively useful. It can fuel... A device. Yes, Essentia doesn't just go into infusions. It can be used to power some thomic devices. This Herba Essentia can be used to fuel the thing that speeds up plant growth. Okay, so we have the altar arranged, we have the acceptor in place, and we have all the sources of Essentia. We have the 16 aqua, we have more than enough arbor, so, to activate it, we are going to just need to poke the runic matrix with our wand. But, there is something we need to be careful of, and that is that instability I told you about. This is going to be a relatively easy one. The instability is negligible, meaning that it's probably actually going to go perfectly no matter what I do. But, hopefully some of these effects will happen just so I can show them to you. You see, some... The more advanced the infusion, generally, the more the instability just on a baseline. And you also get instability from inappropriately arranged elements of the altar. And it increases over time as the infusion happens. And instability has tons of bad effects. They range from making the Essentia cost rise higher and higher, to knocking items off pedestals, to outright deleting items and turning them into flux goo, to blowing up the whole altar and killing you. Yeah, instability can be very, very bad. But this is just a negligible one, and we'll, we'll see how bad it goes. Wum. Yes, you see, the, the Essentia flows up into this goopy line of stuff, because we have goggles of revealing on, we can see the cost ticking down. And those purple little bits of lightning you occasionally see is the instability ticking up as the infusion takes more time. The items are disintegrated and pulled into it. Oh, we got an instability effect. It shocked us. <laughs> but that was the only effect we got because this was a really, really easy infusion. Yes, the axe of the stream is a lovely little Thomcraft axe. It has a couple of effects. It is just on its own a fairly decent axe, but it has a couple of special effects. First of all, if you just take it over to a tree and you use it, 
It may look like nothing's happening, but the tree is deconstructing from top to bottom. And second of all, if I take my magnet off, and, and yes, and because we destroy the tree with the axe of the stream, the leaves get decayed extra fast, which is very convenient. And if I were to do this over here with my magnet off, I said with my magnet off, if you right click it, it draws nearby items in. So it has a kind of, it, it has a built in magnet for you. So it is a good little farming tool. But yes, to get it really effective, we're probably going to want to enchant it with efficiency and with auto repair, which I will talk about in a little bit, doing infusion enchantments. And I don't know, I, I have a lumber axe, and this thing gets a little bit boring to use on really, really tall trees, like our spruces that I use for most of my wood farming. And uh, yeah, because it only does the wood one at a time, no matter how fast you get it. Anyway. What next? Anyway, the main thing that I really want right now is I want myself a better wand. Because that gold banded wand is kind of getting to the edge of its usefulness. So, is it under artifice? It might be under basic... Yeah, it's under thaumatergy. So, I am going to want to make this silverwood wand core. It's relatively simple to make. It's just all the baseline shards, plus a balanced shard, which I'll show you real quick. And it's just some baseline aspects and precantatio. But its instability is moderate. And moderate is big enough that just with the altar as it is, we would probably have some problems. Like, we would have stuff being knocked off left and right, and I would have to... I mean, it, it would be possible, but it would not be nice. Let's keep the X of the stream in here. So, in order to do that, we are going to have to stabilize our altar. Now, how do we do that? To stabilize the altar, we have to more or less decorate it. There are a bunch of items out there that act as infusion stabilizers. You've probably noticed them a couple of times on the tooltips as I mouse things around. Most notably, easy for us, is skulls. You see, it works as an infusion stabilizer. That's good for us because skulls can be made really, really easily out of skeleton essence. Yeah, don't even need a crafting table for it. I can just make stacks and stacks of stacks of skulls. A stack is probably enough, actually. Now, infusion stabilizing items, just like pedestals, just like items, have to be arranged symmetrically. So, actually, let me let me show you something that's really cool that, that'll probably help me illustrate this better. And it's a tool that I really want anyway. Um, the Witching Gadget Arcane Abacus. That's just some sticks and some dye. That's easy. Yes, let's make this Arcane Abacus. Very simple, very easy to make. What this thing will do is it will tell me how unstable my altar is, and if there is anything that is unsymmetrical. So I click on it. Stabilizer at 80, 69, minus 57. 80. Oh, you know what it is? It's these whisper weeds. Yeah. Well, that's okay. That just means we're going to have to overpower that. So, we have total stability of zero. It probably has some natural stability just from the arrangement of the pedestals, but that's being knocked out by our floating whisper weeds over there. Anyway, if I were to place down just a single skull, say right here, now it's going to say that there is a third one lacking asymmetrical partner. 
But if I place another right here, that should knock it out. But that doesn't give us a point of stability yet because points of stability are actually quite expensive. You need quite a few pairs of things to knock it up or down a point. So let's try... Mm -hmm. And let's try... One, two, three. That's still zero. So let's try one, two, three. And let's try one, two, three. There we go. That got it up to one. Yeah. Now, all stability enhancers are equal in cost. It doesn't matter if I use a skull or a wither skull or a candle or a floating flower or whatever. All that it cares about is the placement and the number of them. And the altar's range extends up and down. So rather than having a bunch of skulls cluttering our working area up here, I am going to build out a cavern, a room, underneath our matrix, and I am just going to flood it with circles upon circles of skulls. And that should make our altar nice and stable. I will get back to you in a minute when I have that built. Okay. I have been doing some excavating, and our altar now has 18 stability. You can see I've dug out one of my standard pattern covered stairways here, dug out a maintenance corridor, and we have a pile of skulls, and beneath that we have a pile of skulls, and beneath that we have another pile of skulls. Might be a little bit excessive, but hey, I don't want my altar to be unstable. So I had to get a lot of skulls. It's a valid reason. Don't, don't, don't send the please after me. It's perfectly valid. Yeah. So, you can see that I melted down some things, and I have us our lovely earth, air, fire, water, and order and entropy and magic essentia all lined up for this infusion. And I have all these baseline shards sitting around it. But we still need to put on the balanced shard. And I thought I would just show you really quickly how these are made. A balanced shard is made by taking an air shard and putting it in the crucible with two of all the other types of the baseline aspects that it's missing. So if you put, throw in an air shard, you throw in all of the other five except for air. If you throw in an entropy shard, you throw in everything except entropy. And the easiest way to get that is just with these automagy slivers, where you break up one of these shards on the table with a little bit of uh, Perdicia magic. And you just throw all those in. Doop, 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 doop. And then doop. And that gives you a perfect amount to get a balanced shard. Now, <laughs> if you don't have Automagy, it's a little bit of a tougher deal. There's lots of... Well, you know, you just have to throw things in. And that's kind of one of the things that's going to drive you to getting to the second tier of alchemy, which we haven't done yet. Anyway, as you can see, because these six shards are already on here in a stable configuration, we have to kind of destabilizing it, destabilize it by putting on this seventh balance shard, and it'll complain about that on here. But this is only a moderate infusion. The total instability of this recipe is just five points, and we have a stability of 17. So this is going to be perfectly stable. Okay. And yes, you see that because we have more stability than instability, it looks very calm. There's no lightning flying around. Nothing like that's happening. It is just kind of a boring crafting recipe, and that is how we like it. We want our magic to be safe, sane, and consensual. Ay -ay 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 -ay. And yes, I don't know if this has gone on long enough. Yeah. 
Yeah, if the infusion goes on for too long, it starts to gain more and more instability. But I don't think this has... I don't think this is going to take long. Normally, the only reason you would see that happen is if you don't have enough Essentia of one type. Like, if you have a tiny bit of instability and it, and it boosts the cost up a little bit more than you expected, then it'll just be sitting here, growing more and more unstable. Which is another reason why you want more stability. So, we have this Silverwood Rod. We could just put on gold caps, and it would be perfectly acceptable. It would just be it would be just like our gold banded Greatwood wand, except it would contain a hundred V. Because remember the rod determines the V storage. But we can do better than that. We want to make some thaumium caps. And here we are, inert thaumium cap. That's just a bunch of nuggets. Very, very easy. Doop, 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 and doop. And I am running out of magic. Now, unfortunately, these are inert caps. These cannot be used to cap our wand. If I try and do it, it will just refuse. So, in order to use these, I have to awaken them. I have to charge them with a lot of Potentia and some Aurum. And I need to use some Salus Mundus. Salus Mundus is just um, balanced shards that you smelt. If I put them in a furnace, they become Salus Mundus. Now, I did notice that by making the altar parts, I got a quest reward of this ethereal essence. And this, I believe, yes. Ethereal essence is something that drops from a monster called Wisps. You can usually find them in Magical Forest, and you can find them in the Nether. It also drops from Eldritch Guardians. Ethereal Essence can contain any of the aspects, but it also always contains a little bit of Aurum. Usually it contains two points of each, but because these are Aurum shards, they contain even more Aurum. So I can just bung that all in there. You can also obtain um, Ethereal Essence by breaking a, a Aura node. But that I would not recommend. Oh yes, and by the way, from some of these quests I got these placeable aura nodes. Um, I believe that they will randomly generate depending on what biome I put them in. So I would put them in this magical forest and they would generate some interesting types of aspects. But I am going to wait on that until I have some means of easily moving them around. Anyway, let us take this aurum here. There we go. And I am going to have to make another balanced shard. Yeah, making Salus Mundus. Salus Mundus is one of those things that you need for a lot of tiny little things. So when we get into the second tier of alchemy, it's going to be one of the things that we want to kind of bulk produce. So. Now you notice that... Yep, this is another one that cannot be even, because it requires three. So we just put two here and one there. Now, how much potentia did it require? It requires 12. Well, I have enough to do that once. So let's do that once, and let's getting working, let's getting working on some more potentia. Potentia is most easily gotten from coal. Let's just put, like, I don't know, 12 in. I've decided I'm going to feed the alchemical furnace just one coal at a time so that, you know, it doesn't fill that thing up. Okay, and let's move the orange jar. Oh, I shouldn't have moved that, but oh well, it was fine. It was already, it had already sucked out what it needed. 
Yes, you see these glowy charged caps. Yeah, this is kind of early game Thongcraft, is waiting for things to melt and go into jars. What am I doing? This goes there. Anyway, yes, let's look at how stable this is. Yeah, see, total stability 17 because it's uneven, and it's a total instability of 5. So we're fine to do this. <laughs> gloopy gloopy gloop. A gloopy gloopy gloop. Notice that regardless of the animation, it's already put all of the Essentia into the caps. The animation is just kind of something that looks fancy. The actual mechanics happen pretty quickly. So, now we have a problem of... I do not think we have enough magic. Yeah, we need... We need a crap ton in order to do this. Oh boy. Well, I am just going to charge my wand, and I will talk to you again in a moment. Okay. Got the wand all charged, and here we go. Girl, Thaumium Bossed Silverwood Wand. Capacity 100, and I believe that this should have a 75% V rate. Of course, now that I've done that, the gold wand is completely empty. Yep. And you know, I think this might not even be the wand that I really want. I just did this more or less to show off the infusion process, and that's kind of the progression of baseline Thomcraft is... You, you can tell when you've kind of come into your own as a as a thaumaturge when when you finally make your first thaumium and silverwood wand. It's kind of the main working wand that you use for a lot of your time. But I don't think that's what I want for myself. Well, what I really want is an infernal wand with void caps, but I think that for most of working, I might want to use these living wood wands and this dreamwood staff. So yeah, that's just going to take a lot of rune crafting. It's not even all that unstable. And I think that what this is going to allow me to do is this is going to allow me to convert mana into V. It should fill itself by draining mana. And because I've got that mana mirror hooked up to my mana gen, I should have all the magic forever. And depending on how fast it fills, I might be able to make two of them and just swap them out of the table as they fill. Yeah, I think I'm going to try that out. But first... First, I think I am going to make a decanting golem. So... Let's see. Core of alchemy is what we want. It's just going to take two water bottles, three water bottles, excuse me, a jar and a decanting core. I should have a spare decanting core from when I was experimenting with... with... did I throw it out? I must have thrown it out. Damn. Ugh. Stupid. Should have seen that coming. Oh well. Uh, what does a decanting core cost? Let us see. I know it's going to take this baseline seal. And it's going to take just some aqua and some vacuos. Vacuos is easy. Aqua. I think it said five points. Yeah, five points. Easy. Easy, easy peasy. Just doop, doop, doop. Decanting core. Get rid of the goo. Next, I need to just make myself a golem. Well, next, I need to infuse this. So it's going to need three water bottles and a warded jar. So... Let's put the decanting core in the center here. Let's put doop, doop. Doop and doop. 
And that should register. Yes. <laughs> See that total instability of the infusion too? Yeah, that's... This is a low tier. You can tell that you're supposed to do this really early on. I probably should have done this first. So, it's going to require Precantatio, Aqua, and Motus. I have enough Precantatio. I do not have enough Aqua, and I do not have enough Motus. And melting takes a little while, so I will be right back. Melting down all these trapdoors is going to give me a crap ton of arbor, so I'm going to make a void jar. This is very simple, it's just you soup up a water jar with some obsidian and some blaze powder and some magic. Also, I filled up the Thaumi embossed wand a little bit, and you can see that it's a 90% cost. I misremembered. I think it might be the void caps that give you 75%. So, the void jar will just, very simply, uh, it will accept up to 64 arbor, but anything beyond that, it will void, and it will still create suction for arbor. So it allows you to, you know, because you get arbor from frickin' everything. Anything made of wood. Anything with wood in it. Arbor. So you can just keep this jar there, and it will deal with the excess for you. Because, meh, you use Arbor for a couple of things. Like, we used one for the tree, for the uh, Axe of the Stream earlier, but really, it's barely used at all. So, there you go. Okay, here we go. Wait, did I get enough Aqua? I did not get enough Aqua. Oh, dear. Well, uh, here we have a, uh, a potential... A uh, preview of what happens when you don't do this right. Um, okay, I'll just um, put the tube on the aqua. Get all of that. Oh dear. Oh dear. This is gonna... Well, okay, we have, we have quite an amount of leeway here before this starts going bad. That's Herba. I should have put the other two jars down as well. And air. Oh boy. Okay, so how's that instability doing? It's still at two, but it will start to rise over time. I shouldn't panic. I have I have loads of time. Um tubes. So put on the air jar. Let's just take this one off. Wait for it to fill up with either Herba or Aqua, and then put the other two tubes on. Aqua! Okay, and now you see it will gradually start infusing. Have we reached instability 3 yet? No, we have not. Yeah, you see it's fairly generous. Especially when you have 18 stability. That is actually very high. Excuse me, hiccups. Mm. Oh boy, this. What? Why did you. Oh, because it's still. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, go. I should have put jar labels on this. That's another thing I can talk about. Uh, what are jar labels take? I believe it's just paper and slime. Jar label. Yeah. It's just paper, ink, and slime. Or a... Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, um... Yeah, this is all done. Okay. That's... That's a bit less panicking. So, yeah. Um, always be sure to double-check on the amount of Essentia that you have before you start the infusion. But if you start it off anyway, it is no big deal. And if you absolutely cannot get what you need in time, you can stop an infusion safely just by coming up and right-clicking on the central pedestal to take away the central item. That will cancel the infusion. Do not ever 
never, ever, ever deconstruct the runic matrix while it's in use. That will be nasty. But, um, yeah, decanting golem. <laughs> Okay, I figured out what I was doing wrong, and I was doing it wrong. You have to program these in a somewhat special way. So what you do is you take your little guy, and you see that I made a brand new one out of tallow. Tallow is just uh, rotten flesh that's been treated with precantatio in the crucible. And first you give him his core, and that just wakes him up, but he's not quite ready yet. Then you have to take the Goldomancer's Bell and just regular, not sleep, not sneak, just regular left click him. That picks him up and that keeps his upgrades intact. And then you right click him on the alchemical furnace. And that binds him to it. And you see how he's carrying a proper jar now? And now I can tell him that I want him to take from the Alembics into these jars. Oh wait, I have to tell him I'm talking to him specifically take to these jars. And now he will go. Now, the reason the straw golem was only carrying one before was because golems have their own carrying capacity. I forgot about that. It has been forever since I got this far in Thomcraft. So, you see how uh, it says carry limit one on the straw golem? Yeah. Apparently that applies to Essentia as well. So I made this special Tallow Golem. He's a little bit slower moving, but he carries eight at a time. And I can give him some upgrades to make him go faster. More likely though, I'm just gonna play dress up. <laughs> make it so cute. Okay. Infusion stability three against my 18 stability. It's going to require Lots of Arbor, Precantatio, Vitae, Census, and Herba. I believe that I have more than enough of all of those. So, let's zoom. Now, while that's cooking, let's start researching the other thing I want, which is Elementium Caps. I believe that these are a lot like Thaumium ones, in that they need to be awakened. Yes. Hmm. Well. Yeah, if I want to do that, then I'm going to need to fight the Gaia Guardian. And you know what? I think I actually have enough footage for today's episode. So... Next time on Regrowth, we continue the quest for the Mana Wand, and we will be fighting the Gaia Guardian. I'll see you then.